Alright, welcome back guys. In this video, you will learn how to create this cool poster design inside Photoshop step by step. Let's get started. Alright, as you can see, I have an image imported inside Photoshop. The first thing I'm going to do is to cut this shoe out of this background. For that, I'm going to select my object selection tool and on the options bar, I make sure the mode is set to rectangle. Then I'll just click here to create a selection around the portion I need to select just like so. Now, if we zoom into this selection, you will see that there is some work that needs to be done here, especially at the edges. So I'm going to take some time to refine these edges. Now, as you can see, everything looks perfect. The next thing I'm going to do is to go to select, modify, and then choose contract. I'll contract it by one pixel to shift the edges in. Then say OK. Then I'll go again to select, modify, and this time I choose feather. Feather is going to soften the edges of this selection. A feather radius of 0.8 will work just fine, so I'll click OK. Now here on the layers panel, I'm going to click on this button to add a max. Then I'm going to right click here and choose convert to smart object. Now I'm going to go to file and choose new to create a new document. The document dimensions will be set to 1080 by 1350 or just click on create. Now I'll return back to this image and with my move tool, I'll just grab this shoe onto the new document. When I see the plus sign on the canvas, I let go. And as you can see, it is too big. So I'm going to scale it by pressing Ctrl plus T. Now I'm going to press Ctrl plus T to transform it one more time. Then I'm going to right click and choose flip horizontal. And to make sure you and I have the exact dimensions, here on the options bar, I'm going to highlight the width value. And I'll enter 5.10 there. Then under the angle, I'm going to input 128.88. Then just click OK. On the layers panel, I'm just going to rename this layer to shoe. And I don't actually think we need the background, so I'm going to unlock it and then drag it to the trash icon like so. Then I'll click on the adjustment layer and choose gradient to add a gradient background. I'll click inside this arrow and as you can see, I created this custom gradient for this demonstration. So I'm going to select the first one here and click OK. I'll make sure it sits right at the bottom and we don't actually need a mark so I'm going to delete it. Then with my rectangle tool, I'm just going to create a rectangle like so. I'm going to click on the fill on the options bar and make it gradient fill. And I'll choose this gradient. And I'm going to make it a white stroke and increase the stroke up to 20 pixels like so. Now as you can see, it doesn't align with the gradient background. So while this layer is selected, just hold the control key, that will be the command key and click here to select this background. Now with those two layers selected, click on this button on the options bar. And as you can see, it is aligned to canvas and not selection, that's very important. Then just click here to align everything horizontally and click here to align everything vertically. I'm going to grab my rectangle to one more time and create another rectangle just like so. I'm going to click on the fill and make it gradient fill and choose this particular gradient. I'm going to also click on the stroke and make it a gradient stroke. And for the gradient, I'm going to choose this one. Now let's increase the stroke size up to 20 pixels as well. Now I'm going to press Ctrl T to transform it and just rotate it like so. Then I'll move it here. Now as you can see, the gradient doesn't look right. Let's confirm it and we are going to adjust it later on. For now, I want this new rectangle to sit directly above this one so I can be able to add a clipping marks in between them, just like so. Now I think the background elements are okay, so let's put those into one group. And let's lock it. Now with the shoe layer selected, I noticed that the color right here does not match with the background, so I'm going to select it with the pen tool. Now with that color selected, I'll shift to the paths panel, then double click here and rename this path to path 1. Now I'll just hold the control key, that will be the command key, and then just click on this path thumbnail to load it as selection. Then I'll go to select, choose modify, and then choose feather because I need the transition from these edges to be so soft. The feather radius of 0 0.8 will work just fine, so I'll confirm it by clicking OK. Now while on the layers panel, I'm going to click on this adjustment icon down here and choose Hue Saturation. 
Then I'm going to hit the word colorize. And since you are working along with me, I have some input values here. I'm going to make the hue 351. Then I'll press the tab key to advance to saturation. And I'll input the value of 63. Hit the tab key again. And for the lightness, I'm going to enter a value of 3. Now we get this nice color here. Now I'm going to select these two layers and put them into one group. Now with that done, I'm going to switch to my text tool. I'll click and hold here for a moment and pick the vertical type tool. On the options bar, the fonts I'm using is Giroy set to black and I'm just going to click here. Then I'll just confirm the transformation. Now with the new text layer selected, I'm going to duplicate it and then just drag it and make sure it sits below the shoe group. Now I'll select the topmost layer, click on this button to add a max. Then I'll press the B key to switch to my brush tool and I'll increase the size of my brush. And with the max selected, I'm going to paint the portions. I don't need them to be visible with black. Now with my rounded rectangle tool, I'm just going to create a button right here. And then I'll click on the fill, click on this button and sample this color with the eyedropper tool. Then with my horizontal type tool this time, I'm just going to click here and input some text. Now to align the background and the text layer together, I'm going to click here to select both of them. Then I'll click here, make sure alignment is set to selection and then I'll make sure everything is aligned horizontally and vertically like so. I'll then press Ctrl plus G to group everything and I'll call this group button. Now let's add the last text. And by doing that, we are done guys. Here is the final design. Thank you so much for watching the video to the end. I hope you learned something very interesting in this video. If you got value out of it, kindly support the channel by subscribing and hitting the bell icon. I'm going to see you in the next one tomorrow. Take care and good luck.